Meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. And if you've been in Florida, if you live in Florida, you know that over the last week or so, it has been really, really warm. And it's gotten to be really, really dry across this part of the country. For more on why that is, we're going to go way back in time. Now, we talked about this at the beginning of winter, that we would likely be warmer than normal and drier than normal. Of course, we've had our blasts of cold this winter, but they haven't lasted terribly long. And that's, again, something that's to be expected in Florida anyway. But during a La Nina pattern, we have something that is the calling card. It's the subtropical ridge, and we're going to get into that. But what happens, it helps to force the jet stream to the north. And again, this is a typical La Nina pattern, which helps to really bake the southern tier of the country. It keeps all of the cold weather, more often than not again, and more of the active weather across the northern tier of the country. That is from a temperature perspective. Same deal, though, from a precip perspective. With an active jet stream to the north, that keeps the active weather, the rainfall, and snowfall when it's cold enough across the northern tier of the country. But then that more often than not, again, robs the southern tier of the country, including Florida, of that beneficial moisture that we get in the winter time. So I mentioned that subtropical ridge. This big chunk of high pressure is one of the calling cards of a La Nina pattern. You typically have it build over the Gulf of Mexico or Caribbean, and its influence really is widespread through the southern tier of the U.S. and then into the northwest Caribbean. Anyway, this is what we're looking at on Friday when we could push 90 degrees. You will notice that orange color there as we take this through the week ahead turn red as this subtropical ridge in the short term is going to really, really intensify. And that is just going to enhance the warmer than normal temperatures we've been dealing with and the drier than normal conditions. So what a subtropical ridge is, it's this big area of high pressure in the mid-levels of our atmosphere, hangs out about 15 to 20,000 feet above your head. And what this does is it helps to not only force the cold air and storms north, but then it also promotes its own warming. With high pressure, air sinks. As air sinks, it warms up and it dries up. So not only are we preventing that cold air from infiltrating Florida more often than not, these areas of high pressure also bake areas that they sit on top of. And you see this is going through next Thursday. This is going to be way out towards the last week of February. Look at the temperature trend here for Orlando and most of Central Florida. We could be flirting and likely even exceeding 90 degrees next week in February. So here we go. This is going to be Sunday now into Monday. It's going to be warm. Average high temperatures are back to the mid-70s in the Orlando area through Central Florida. By Tuesday, we are getting to 85 degrees. Look at what happens, though, as we get to next Wednesday and Thursday. Already by Wednesday, we are going to be flirting with 90 degrees. And then by Thursday, this is going to be February 23rd. I think 91 could be a conservative number. There is going to be so much warmth surging in from the tropics. And again, that big area of high pressure is just going to bake Florida. Look at this. We're talking all the way through the upcoming weekend. This is now going to be the weekend of the 25th and 26th. So that last weekend of February, we are talking about big time warmth continuing. All right, we're used to 90s, but in winter, it's kind of weird. So the earliest occurrence of 90 degrees in Orlando was February 15th. That happened back in 1935. Okay. The second earliest occurrence was... February 24th, that happened in 1962. So, of course, the 15th of February has already passed, so we're not going to get the earliest occurrence. But if that forecast comes into fruition, we will have set the second earliest occurrence of 90 degrees in Orlando ever. And again, records go back to the late 1800s, so there is a lot of data. In terms of how many times 
something like this has happened in February. Again, it's not happened in January, but it's only happened three times on record. Twice in 1962. That was a very warm February. And then also, again, in that 1935 year. And again, records go back to all the way to 1892. So there is a lot of data here to go off of. It's very rare. And again, we are going to be at least in that ter territory. And we could, and again, the forecast is to get our first 90-degree day already. It's also been really dry. Your grass might be a little crunchy lately. And we mentioned, again, one of the other side effects of having those big areas of high pressure kind of sit on top of you for a long period of time is that it also dries you out. Of course, if you're not getting moisture, you're not helping the grass. So earlier this week, parts of Central Florida officially got into drought status. Certainly towards Jacksonville and Gainesville, Marion County, Flagler County, Volusia County, the northern half of Lake County, including the villages in Sumter as well. That yellow color that you see there, that's the abnormally dry category that the United States Department of Agriculture characterizes things. They start off with that abnormally dry category and then eventually work their way up to exceptional drought. Now, we're nowhere near that. It would take a long time for us to get into this range. But nonetheless, parts of central Florida are considered to be in drought status. So the question is looking long range, is this going to break and the answer to that is likely not the indications are that we are going to keep this theme rolling of that really really warm air and i want to show you here this is going to be the extended outlook all the way through february 27th so this is going to close out basically the month of february and you see here this is from the Climate Prediction Center, but I can tell you the reason why that this forecast is like that, and you see the bright reddish brown color here, a very high confidence that we are going to be way above normal for the rest of the month. Now, again, cold front can come in, weaken that ridge for a day or two, but this is more often than not that we are going to be in this really, really warm pattern that's going to keep things, again, at least in the 80s, and as we showed you towards the end of next week in that 22nd, 23rd, 24th time frame, we're going to be at least flirting with 90 degrees, if not even jumping into the 90s. So some really, really crazy stuff. And again, this pattern does not look like it's going to break down anytime soon. So fire up the pools again. Water bill might be suffering a little bit if you are planning on keeping the grass alive again it's getting a little crunchy out there because of that you can blame that subtropical ridge and again you can blame the overall la nina pattern this was something that was forecast and to be expected as we have gotten into that la nina pattern again we'll see if we can get a nice big cold front in here to change things maybe into the first week of march but nonetheless more often than not we are stuck with that warmer than normal pattern